My name is Nicole Schwartz, and I'm the Senior Product Manager for the Composition Analysis Group. Uh, as you can see on the disclaimer, I'm about to talk about potential future roadmap items. Do not use this for purchasing or planning. This is just things that I would like to do in the coming calendar year. And when I say 2022, I mean calendar year. So my top goals for the coming year are to show dependency paths, which should help us get dependency scanning to complete. I wanna work on doing the piece of software bill of materials specifically related to containers and project software dependencies. There are other teams across the company working on various other pieces of SBOM because SBOM goes from one end of your development process to the other, but we need to get our piece done to contribute to that. We would like to replace License Finder and we would like to get the automatic remediation bot out the door. We do have suggested solutions right now, but we want a little bot to make the MRs. Things that we need to maintain doing, we always do, we continue to need to do. Uh, latest version of our tools, language and package manager updates as those come around, security bugs, bugs, and uh, be compliant with our uptime requirements. Next in an unordered list is a whole bunch of things that I will go over um, in a little more detail, uh, but that's kind of the summary lines there. So specifically for show dependency paths, the MVC is just to show text updates of a short path and a long path and make that available on the vulnerability details page. We currently have that kind of information available on the dependency list page, at least shortest, but we need to be consistent about wherever you go to look at your uh, vulnerability and dependency, you need to be able to gather more information about it so you can take the best action possible. And uh, for example, see, I know why this was introduced. Let me go patch that thing. After we do that, hopefully we can do another content maturity scorecard. We can hopefully just reuse the exact same template we did previously, rerun that and see if adding that MVC of dependency paths gets us to complete. Um, regardless of if it gets us to complete or not, we need to work on the post MVC showing the graphical dependency path. That may require us to do additional storage. So we'll have to see if we can do that or if there's some pre-work for that. So the SBOM MVC is for dependency scanning, container scanning and license compliance. It's for the default branch and the first step is to improve our internal SBOM, make UX updates. We're doing a questionnaire currently, and we wanna find out exactly what people need, but we're planning a whole bunch of UX updates to that page, which could include renaming it from the dependency list to the SBOM uh, to be determined. Again, SBOM is more inclusive than just your dependencies, but that is an element of it. Uh, and we want to support an industry format, either SPDX or Cyclone DX, from that page that you can download in addition to our internal format. And uh, then we want to allow you to, in some way, say whether you want this dependency SBOM to be built and stored as part of a build artifact and have a specific time to live with that. And uh, I definitely need all the engineers and myself to keep an ear to the ground for all of the other groups working on SBOM things so that we can work with them and make sure we have consistency for our customers across uh, all of the places that we need to be reporting what is in your software and just not making it chaos and siloed. For license compliance, we need to replace license finder because it is not well-maintained and not great. Uh, whatever we do replace it with needs to have parity with license finder as far as functionality, languages, package managers, et cetera. The next thing that I wanna do as soon as the workspaces is ready, which is hopefully 
in a couple of releases is to move our allow and deny policies into workspaces and security orchestration if um, Sam White and his engineers have not already done that. They have, yay. Uh, if not, then we will do that. Um, then once it's there, we need to allow those policies to be set up by the project subgroup group or workspace level. Uh, finally, we need to do some UX improvements. I'm hoping that that's part of the SBOM research. Otherwise, uh, at least we need to do some simplistic ones for showing the allowed or unknown or denied on your list of found licenses. Um, and then I do believe we do have some older mocks from Kyle so we can surface them up if necessary. Also, we need to enable the viewing and searching to be not just at the project level, but allow you to do that at the subgroup, group, or workspace level. And again, that's for the licenses uh, within your uh, code from software dependencies. So the next thing is for license compliance and dependency scanning. Nope, that should actually say, um, Container scanning, sorry, I will update that slide. Automatic remediation, we want the bot to automatically create an MR for the suggested solutions that are available. We need to have security do a audit on our bot before we can release it. And then we also need to discuss efficiencies and improvements on the bot because we know it is not uh, very efficient in its MVC state. So we need to discuss that and plan which ones we have to do uh, just for the sake of speed as well as not wasting resources. So now we get into the other items. So if we get all those knocked out and we start having room, here are things that I would like. These are not in order, these are alphabetical. This list could change based on customer sentiment, um, our competitors, internal initiatives, et cetera. Uh, there is no way we also will get all of these done, but let me tell you a little bit about each one of these. I would love us to always have a report, whether we succeeded or failed, uh, and have a little bit of information in there, and we need to coordinate this across all of Secure and Protect. I would like automatic remediation to expand to at least the top five uh, package managers and languages within GitLab, because uh, right now it's a very limited set. So if we've got the bot out, the next thing is obviously going to be like, hey, the bot doesn't work for my language. So let's aim to get at least the top five. Um, plus, if the GitLab tools are not in the top five, let's just do those anyway. And dog fooding, right? Cheap scans. So this is instant results when advisory's DB is updated. So I believe we might need database space for this as well as a bot. Hopefully we can reuse the security bot potentially for this. Uh, what I mean by this is when we detect or know that the advisory's DB is updated, a person's project should then use the most recent dependency and uh, container scans, uh, artifacts that are available, or our internal SBOM or whatever it should use, a already generated resource and check if there are known dependencies that have newly published advisories. And it should make those available in a dashboard or in some way. This will give us a couple benefits. One, for people who don't run frequent pipelines, it means that they will not be uh, necessarily missing out on something urgent. Uh, it also means that a developer who is the first person to run an MR after the advisory's database is updated will not be confused about why am I being told about this thing? I didn't introduce this thing. Yes, they didn't introduce that thing, however, the new advisory made that relevant. Um, so we may need to work with the uh, vulnerability uh, management group because we need to have some kind of way to make sure that those are saved without us running a pipeline and are available in the vulnerability list 
but we can also put them in a dashboard somewhere and then also make sure that we are not bothering people with them in the next run uh, merge requests. Now, of course, there could be a, a race condition where somebody is running that MR right while this bot's running, um, but I'm, we can deal with that edge case. Uh, let's cover everybody else first uh, and reduce that noise for people. The other thing we discussed this a lot um, was what kind of efficiencies can we introduce? Can we make sure that we're uh, pre-filtering items and, and skipping specific files? Can we uh, potentially skip the build stage or allow the build stage to be skipped? Can we skip running completely if we can tell that there have been zero changes to dependencies since the last run? Can we improve our caching in any way? Uh, what efficiencies can we uh, eke out so that we run uh, faster and don't waste uh, money or minutes for anyone? We also need to make some enable in the UI improvements. Today, we have the enable using a merge request very simplistic, um, whereas SAST has like nice things where a lot of the common variables are given like drop downs and stuff to kind of help or uh, hold your hand through that process. So I'd like to get a little bit closer to the SAST experience. Formalize a support standard. We have discussed this off and on, but I don't think that we formally have this documented or, or agreed on. And I think it would be good for us to discuss this and then propose it to all of Secure and Protect and see if we can unify that across all of us and then potentially get it published on the support page. And what I mean by that is that maybe Secure and Protect will aim to um, support the latest LTSs within you know, 90 days of their introduction. Uh, and once something is end of life for X months, uh, we will no longer support it. Um, just uh, basically around uh, what kind of standards do we want to try and set for ourselves as far as uh, languages and package managers uh, that we are going to support. And uh, I think putting that together, at least internally, um, will be helpful to the person who is uh, on reaction rotation and maybe looking to see if there are new package managers or whatever out we can see just how urgent it is like have we missed it by 30 days or 60 days there's uh, license compliance smart rules um, I would want us to find some kind of open source project that does this uh, so we're not having to maintain it ourselves necessarily but people would love to be able to do something like, I want to disallow all copy lefts. They don't want to pick the individual licenses that they wish to deny within their projects. They want to uh, pick anything within a certain category. Uh, so just smarter or more comprehensive um, rules. And so that we'd have to find some kind of uh, resource that somebody's hopefully already started tagging uh, license types somewhere and be very transparent that this is what we're using. Um, and if you don't agree with that resource, you're going to have to tag them yourselves. Um, so potentially allowing people to set up their own groupings themselves. Uh, more information for dependency scanning. Is it a development dependency? Like what other information can we provide to help people when they're triaging and assessing the risk. Because a CVSS score just tells you in the default situation with certain assumptions, what is the risk? But by giving you more and more information, you may be able to quickly say, in my specific instance, this is a lower risk because you've told me that it's a dev dependency and I know that that does not get pushed up to production. So I'm not worried about that. Related to always generating uh, reports, I would also like to enhance um, or expand the, the breadth of exit codes that we have because some users do want to hard break their pipeline, which I disagree with. Uh, if vulnerabilities are found, period, uh, end of story, uh, I believe they should be using approval rules and policies for that. Um, but this is something I would like to explore and make available uh, to customers. 
it also could just allow them to be a lot smarter about knowing uh, this failed for a reason of compatibility or, or whatever, and maybe make the choice of like, I would rather stop the pipeline if dependency scanning was unable to run for, for some reason. And I wanna look into that. So, offline revisit. Um, we are not at 100% for offline. I would have all package managers, all of our analyzers for license compliance and dependency scanning uh, configured to work offline with test projects, with automated tests in our offline environment. Um, so kind of just going back and cleaning that up and tying the bow on everything there. On-demand scans, I would love to follow the DAST model and make uh, dependency scanning available on demand to customers. Um, OpenShift revisit all analyzers. So we should hopefully be hiring someone who is interested in learning about OpenShift um, and that person will be responsible for kind of being the subject matter expert for OpenShift, keeping up with all the news, uh, researching things across all of Secure and Protect. And so something I wanna make sure that they do is uh, finish off getting all package managers and languages across license compliance and dependency scanning working. Make sure that there's video demos for all of them. Make sure there's demo project and environment for all of them, work with quality on that, and then go beyond um, us and go across everyone in Secure and Protect and do that same thing. Uh, once that's complete, hopefully that won't be uh, too long mixed in with their onboarding. It will be, I suspect, a long period of time, but not that long relatively. They can then get into doing the normal rotation of things, but when an OpenShift update occurs, they're going to be responsible for helping uh, get that updated across the board uh, within Secure and Protect. Package Hunter, uh, look into bringing that in as supported for at least the software as a service users. Um, then we could look at self-managed. Uh, our customers really do like this. It was not written in a way that works within the same model that we do right now. Um, I believe security is attempting to change that um, so that it is easier for us to take over that project. Um, so I would like to take that on when we can. Uh, policy. So I would love to have us be able to set up smarter policies utilizing um, the uh, approvers and security orchestration work from Sam White, maybe some of the compliance stuff, like work with all the other teams, see what's out there, make sure it works within the workspaces model. So it can be at the project subgroup group workspace. But essentially, um, if dependency firewall is not done by Tim Rizzi's team, I want us to kind of do something similar. So with license compliance, we allow or deny certain licenses and that triggers an approval. Same idea. I want somebody to be able to set that they want, you know, never to have this certain dependency or never to have this certain dependency less than a certain version or equal to a certain version, whatever. I want it to be slightly uh, smart. And uh, so that would kind of be almost a dependency firewall. It wouldn't stop someone from adding it, but it would stop it from going out to production. And ideally, whether we do this first or second, I do want to work closely with the that team so that we can make sure we're writing this in a way where users can set that rule once and it works for the dependency firewall plus the dependency scanning policies. Um, I also want us to take that same concept and uh, tweak and enhance our when to alert and when to auto dismiss. So uh, Sam White's team has done a bunch of things and enhancements to, you know, should I introduce when it's new or so on and so forth or at certain criticality level. So uh, enabling that granularity. But I think we may need to start uh, giving more data uh, so that we can actually allow more granularity. So maybe don't alert me on dev dependencies, so on and so forth, which kind of with that one, um, 
not just about alerting or stopping things and requiring approvals, but in some cases I may know that I always want to close or dismiss a certain type of CVE. So if it's related to this particular version, well, we internally have forked that and patched it. And so I don't want to hear about any CVEs related to that. So I want them automatically dismissed. We need to work to make sure that there's enough information coming through from our scans and uh, the ability for the policy to handle that so that people can set up those kind of granular rules so that they have less noise. Right now we are telling people about everything and we need to help them and possibly work with UX on when I see something, if I'm going to dismiss it, do I also wanna set up a rule? Think of it when you're in your Gmail or your Outlook and you get a particular piece of mail and you're like, well, I do want this piece of mail to hang around, but I don't necessarily need it as urgent. So I'm gonna set up a rule or a filter for this piece of mail. And I'm gonna say, always mark it as red and put it in this particular folder. Basically, I want to get to that same point with dependency scanning and license compliance. It's like in these scenarios, yes, log this, make sure it's in that audit trail, but I want you to dismiss it or resolve it or whatever with this specific note. And so, Again, that might require us to be sending or providing a little bit more data in the report so that this can be actioned on. And I want it to be available at the subgroup group, you know, um, workspace level. Reducing noise. Um, policy is absolutely part of reducing noise. Another part of that is uh, grouping, aggregation, deduplication, all sorts of other things. There's a lot of nuances there. And I think we need to talk about that across Secure and Protect. We've kind of had the conversation before. I think we should have it again. Um, my personal feelings, just to share with everyone, are that we should only dedupe when we absolutely positively know that it's exactly a duplicate. Um, in other cases, I think we should be doing like a one to many and be like, these are all kind of related and we're going to only show them to you once, but tell you like there's these four related ones. If you want to kind of close one of them, but keep the other ones, you can do that. Or if you want to close all four at once, you can also do that. So just um, almost allowing users to kind of take a look and say, we've lump these together because we feel if you solve this one problem, um, these are all related or very, very similar. DAST is doing something similar-ish, but right now they're um, aggregating them all, pre-saving them as a finding and saying this particular thing is found for all of these website pages because it's really hard for them to tell in the back end is that one function or two. So in our case, um, I want us to, to group it by default People could turn that off potentially. And then like tell them like, we found these other three things. And so if you dismiss this, we're gonna dismiss all of them because we think they're related unless you wanna click this like uncombine button or whatever. I don't know, who knows? This needs to be explored, talked out. I'd love to hear everybody else's thoughts. I just think that there needs to be like the hard dedupe versus like the softer grouping versus like, okay, we're even less sure these are related. So we're gonna like link them or aggregate them, but they're not even like one to many. Uh, next, again, these are in alphabetical order. So not necessarily in, in preference um, and other things could come up from users um, that bump this list all around. Risk, um, so we've talked about this a lot. We would love to have a database where we store all sorts of metadata about dependencies, like generic dependencies, not any particular uh, individual company's dependencies, just generic internet dependencies. Um, is it end of life? What is the most recent version? How often do they publish updates? <clears throat> How uh, many maintainers are there? What countries are the maintainers? And um, all sorts of other information. Um, what is the uh, publicly known um, hash or signature or whatever um, 
and allow then customers to set policies where I want you to alert me if one of my dependencies is now end of life, which gets into that whole cheap scan concept where, you know, like the bot is doing something at a regular interval and checking for stuff that may be a new piece of data in the risk database or the advisory's database, um, but not necessarily needing to run a pipeline scan and being able to reference our internal SBOM or reports or something. Um, do you have a policy that says if we're one major version behind, alert me? Um, or three minor versions, I don't know. Uh, anyway, insert all sorts of fun things here. I want risk and policy to, to work together. Um, and then this probably, we should be working with the compliance team as well on this, just so that, you know, uh, smoothly across the development experience, all of the people who have to interact with the software team, the legal team, the compliance teams, the security teams can be able to set up policies and whether they want, I, I want this to be, you know, require someone to approve this. And then hopefully we can work with other teams within GitLab you know, are there other ways that we could alert people that aren't a necessarily a um, acquire approval? Could we automatically tag certain individuals or groups on an MR or on an issue and just alert them that way because they use their to-dos? Like, you know, what are our uh, options there? Uh, next item is search and filter. We need to definitely add searching and filtering to the dependency list and the license list. We possibly need to also make enhancements to the Vuln list. Um, that requires us having potentially the workspaces stuff because you know people want to do that. Possibly able to store additional stuff. I don't know what prereqs there are there. We're definitely going to have to make some additions on the back end because front end indicated that they cannot do that just on the front end right now, we're lacking some data on the back end, but we need to add searching and filtering uh, to all of those spots for dependencies and licenses. SBOM post MVC. So, you know, the MVC was default branch, be able to download it from the dependency list page, generate it on, you know, a certain condition uh, and store it for a certain time to live in one industry format, either Cyclone or SPDX. So there is a lot of stuff in the post MVC. And I think once we get the initial thing out, we'll get a bunch of user um, feedback so we can gauge like what things are, are most important, but allowing someone to import an upstream SBOM. So I know that my SBOM for this uh, code that I have included as a bundled file uh, is X. Let me include that SBOM file and point to it and have that then be, um, consumed and part of my dependency software SBOM. Um, and maybe we could also put it like standalone lock file. I don't know if that's possible. Um, if maybe I built something in a separate project and this other project's doing the build, like could that be passed as long as the registry or sorry, the package manager is still available. Um, making sure that all the SBOM stuff isn't just available at the project, but then making it available at the subgroup group workspace level. Um, and then branching out, like beyond just the default branch. Could, do people want to use a, a protected branch? Do people want to use a tag? Um, they're probably going to want SBOMs for other stuff. Like let, let's accommodate them and let's find out what it is they want and, and make that happen. Uh, scheduled scans, again, that's like on-demand scans, but with a recurring schedule or just a singular future date, uh, follow the DAST model. Uh, I would like to sign our own containers so people can, you know, view that maybe in our um, change log or whatever and be like, I know I got the, the correct one or I know it wasn't corrupted or whatever, um, sign an MD5 hash. Um, unification of package managers, dependency standing license compliance. Right now we kind of have like a little bit of mismatch on like, what we support between them. So I would love for us to get unification there um, in, in, insofar as let's add more, uh, not take away any. Then the other thing is once we get some unification there, I'd love to look at what 
the other things in Secure and Protect do where relevant, because obviously some things like container scanning, um, hey, that's that's not a compatible uh, logical thing to, to compare. Um, but let's look at the other ones and then try and get as much parity within Secure and Protect uh, as we can. And uh, that of course would then uh, include the auto remediation bot as well. Uh, and then finally, I've mentioned workspaces a lot, but let's make sure all of the places it makes sense to incorporate workspaces, migrate all of our work into the workspaces uh, model thing stuff uh, so that we can leverage that. The idea there is that instead of having to rewrite something at the project level and at the group level and at the instance level, uh, you write it once and it should work for all of them. There's a YouTube unfiltered with a REIT uh, somewhere, just look for workspaces. There's like an AMA or whatever. Uh, so you can check that out. I think it is still uh, in flux and happening, um, but the initial MVC for the project level, at least getting ourselves into that namespace container uh, should be available soon. So I wanna make sure we are taking all of our old stuff and putting it in there as we're, we're writing stuff, putting that in there. And I believe that's it. So there's your disclaimer again. Uh, I know that is way more than is going to fit in the next calendar year. I just wanted to give you all an idea of the things that I am keeping an eye on and I am trying to balance and prioritize. Uh, we'll consider this a draft run. Y'all can ask me questions. I have to update a couple of the, the slides and whatever, obviously, because I made some mistakes. I'll try and put timestamps in so you can jump around. Uh, hopefully that's helpful and I can re-record this if people have enough questions and they need to do a better version.